All right, so let's talk about a very, very, very important circuit element called a capacitor. All right, now we know batteries, what are they meant to do? Well, they gotta impose a constant potential difference and drive current through a circuit. What's a resistor's job? A resistor's job is to use energy. That's what a resistor does. Anything that uses energy can be thought of as a resistor. What's a wire's job? A wire's job is to get current from one side of the battery to another, to go, to allow current to flow between circuit elements. So what's a capacitor's job? A capacitor is meant to store charge and energy. So just like a resistor uses power, a capacitor stores energy. All right, so the way the capacitors look, they are two plates. Now, they're not always actually like this, but you can think of them like this. Two plates separated by a distance. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some charge on this plate. All right, now, the big question is how good of a capacitor is it? In other words, what's its capacity? Well, here's the idea. The more charge that I store here, the more of a potential difference there'll be across the plates. Because if I were to take another charge, let's say it was a positive charge, it would rather be on the negative plate than on the positive plate because positive charges don't like other positive charges. So the more charge I store, the bigger the potential difference will be. And what we're going to do is we're going to define the capacitance as the amount of charge that I'm able to store divided by the potential difference. So that means if I'm able to store a lot of charge without having a huge potential difference, then I'll get a very, very, very nice large capacitance. If on the other hand, even storing a little bit of charge requires a huge potential difference, then I'll have a really small capacitance. So that's the definition of capacitance. We write it in terms of symbols, C equals charge, which is Q, divided by the potential difference. And sometimes people will write delta V there, but let's just leave it with a V for right now. All right, so what should the unit be? Well, just like everything in SI, everything's in SI. Now, we're gonna call it a farad, but one farad is equal to one coulomb of charge stored per volt of potential difference across. So that's the idea. Capacitance, charge divided by potential difference. The more charge you got, the bigger the potential difference uh, imposed across the capacitor. All right, now let's think about this. I wanna think about this parallel plate capacitor and what its capacitance should be. Well, here's the idea. The reason that we have limits to the capacitance is because this charge is forced to congregate next to itself and it doesn't like it. Positive charges like negative charges. They don't like other positive charges. But I can kind of make that okay if the area of this plate is really big. The bigger the area, the more room that that charge has to spread out and the less it cares that it's sitting next to each other. You can think of the potential difference kind of as how much the charge cares, all right? So our capacitance ought to be proportional to the area of the plates of this parallel plate capacitor, all right? Another geometric property of this parallel plate capacitor is how far apart are the plates? So we've got area, and then we've got distance apart. Now let's think about this. The further the plates are apart, the larger distance we're separating this charge over. And the charge doesn't wanna be separated. So if we put the two plates real close to, together, then they say, you know what, yeah, we don't like being separated, but it's almost as if we're not separated. So we can store more with a smaller potential difference. So that means that when the distance between the plates gets smaller, the capacitance gets bigger. I can store more because they don't care as much. They're not really separated by that much. So that means that the capacitance should be proportional to one over the distance between the plates. So we can write the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor 
as a constant times the area divided by the distance between the plates. This constant has a numerical value 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. Now, how did I work that out? Well, geez, if I take that constant, multiply it by meters squared, the area, and then I divide by meters, the distance, then I got to get farads. So it's farads per meter. All right. This is called the permittivity of free space, and it plays a major role in more advanced discussions about capacitors and electric fields. All right. Now, from our definition of capacitance, the potential difference across any capacitor is equal to the amount of charge that it's holding divided by the capacitance. Now, the neat thing about the capacitance is that it's just a geometrical property. It's like resistance. It doesn't change depending on what situation the capacitors put in. The charge will, potential difference will, but the capacitance will remain the same. All right, so the potential difference is charge divided by capacitance. Now we said that the purpose of the capacitor was to store energy as well as charge. So how much energy is stored? Well, I'm not gonna derive this for you. It takes a little bit of work to derive it, but what we end up with is Q squared over 2C. So it's the square of the charge divided by twice the capacitance. Now we can use this, delta V equals Q over C, to rewrite this in two different, or three different ways overall. One half C delta V squared and one half charge times potential difference. So these three formulas are all saying the same thing but depending on what information you have, you might use this one as opposed to that one. All right, if you know the capacitance and you know the charge, all right, let's do Q squared over 2C. All right, so let's do an example. I've got a three farad capacitor and it's got a potential difference of four volts maintained across it. And I wanna know how much energy does it store? All right, so what have they told me? Well, I've got the capacitance and I've got the potential difference, all right? Capacitance, potential difference. So I want to use this formula. One half capacitance, potential difference, right? Squared. Okay? So 16 divided by 2 is 8. And 8 times 3 is 24 joules. All right. So that's just the way it goes. Energy stored in a capacitor, potential difference across a capacitor, and the meaning of capacitance. Just think about it as a geometrical quantity that will be big when the charge can spread out and will be small when the charge is all confined to one space and it's not allowed to be next to its friends, the opposite charge. All right, that's capacitors.